is very blue. But I like that. Hi, Tony here. Welcome back to the channel for a little bit more of an in-depth look at the brand new Suzuki GSX-8S. I say brand new, it's not that new. It's been around for a little while and uh, I want to tell you all about it. So the GSX-8S is a completely new bike from the ground up and it features a 776cc parallel twin motor that puts out 83 horsepower. It looks good as well and as standard this bike comes with three different riding modes, switchable ABS as well as being able to switch that ABS off and an up and down quick shifter. So when you consider this at £7,999, that's a pretty good price point and the bike looks superb as well, particularly in this Pearl Cosmic Blue. It seems very nicely put together as well. It does have a nice quality finish and there's lots of really nice touches about it. Simple things, just making sure that the yokes, the bars, the clamps, everything is in the same finish. I like the fact that they've gone with the silver fork legs as opposed to gold, because sometimes they can look a little bit garish. You've got LED lights, a double setup at the front here with a little side light. The indicators are still bulbs, but I'm not too concerned about that. But overall, the fit and finish of this bike, I think is nice. It does look like a high quality bike. So what is it up against in that middleweight naked bike sector? Well, the obvious uh, competitor for this is the Honda Hornet 750. Along with that, you've got to look at the KTM 790 Duke. You've also got to consider the Yamaha MT-07, the Triumph Trident and maybe the Kawasaki Z650. There's a few others in there, but I guess they're really the main competitors. So I'm gonna have a look at some of those and throughout this review, I'm gonna to refer to bits and pieces of those, but it's very difficult to do a group test when you don't have all the bikes together. And obviously me, myself and I on this channel don't have the facility to do that. But I did pull together some basic data to compare these bikes. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so we've got the Suzuki uh, with a price of 7,999. That is the top price for all of these bikes. So it's this and the KTM that are the two most expensive. The KTM is the most powerful, followed by the Hornet. When it comes to weight, arguably the KTM is the lightest one, but KTM still show that 174 kilos dry. So by the time you put fuel in there, you're looking at about 185. If you want something different in this range, then the Trident is the only one here that is a triple. And from what I can tell, the GSX-8S is the only one that comes with a quick shifter. So there's obviously quite a lot of differences if you start to peel down into those as to you know, what electronics they have, all those sort of things. But I didn't want to do this as a group test. I just wanted to give you an impression of what this is like. So the best way to do that is to get out on the road and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so some of you will recognise the starting point for this video. Finching Field, which is not far from me, about 10 minutes a ride. And uh, let's just negotiate the bridge here. It's a bit of a hub for bikers. It's a beautiful little village, uh, but the reason it's a hub for bikers is because every road off of here is a nice one, so it seemed like a good place to start. So anyway, on to the GSX-8S. And as we've seen, it's got some healthy competition in that middleweight naked section. So in this video, I want to kind of have a look at it and concentrate on what this bike is like to ride and potentially to live with. I will refer to the other bikes. I have ridden the other bikes with the exception of the Z650. So hopefully I've got a little bit of insight. But the first impressions you get of this bike are that it feels bigger than it actually is. I'm not sure why that is. It's not physically any bigger necessarily than say something like the Hornet. It's about the same seat height, it's about the same overall size. It just feels a little bit more substantial. Obviously it's heavier, it is the heaviest of those bikes and it's kind of middle towards the top in terms of power. But the important thing is the way it delivers that power. I think because it's got that 180 section tire on the rear, that helps to make it feel chunky. It's a pretty solid feeling bike but it's got such a nice rumble from that underslung exhaust that it just feels like it's a bigger bike. We've seen the numbers 
and the spec sheet warriors would say that other bikes have a big advantage over this the honda's got more power the ktm's got more power but it's the way that that power is delivered this bike has got much more push in the mid-range the honda engine's great it's a really nice revy engine this just for road work i think it operates down at a lower rev level in terms of where that shove comes from but it doesn't seem to matter what gear you're in what your speed you're traveling at there's just torque there when you need it i can't see how you would want more horsepower than this on this type of bike on modern roads with the the traffic that we've got and the speed cameras and everything else is precisely what you need i absolutely love this engine it is an all new bike from suzuki and it's good to see that they're pushing some really nice quality stuff out ergonomically it's a really comfortable bike to ride on 510 32 inside leg and it fits me like a gloveless bike i've ridden it for long distances all day rides and I've had no grief from it. Even the seat, which I thought might start to get a little bit tricky after a couple of hours, because there's not much padding on it, it isn't that bad. Just a very genuinely comfortable position. The handling's really sweet as well. Steering's not as sharp uh, as something like the Hornet or the KTM. I think those bikes can feel a little bit more twitchy. The suspension's firmish. I, I rode with Tomboy Bip, who's probably half of my weight, and um, she said she found the suspension harsh. It's taut. You get a really nice feel from it. It doesn't feel sloppy. You don't get much dive under braking, but it is non-adjustable. But you've also got to remember that this bike comes in at £7,999, so you can't expect too much from that. The one thing that this bike does have over the others on that list as standard is a quick shifter. That might not be a very important thing to you. It makes the riding much more enjoyable. There are options on other bikes. So if you want it on the Hornet, I think it's another 250, 260 quid, something like that. But as I say, it's the only one that this comes as standard on and it's very good up and down no issues with it at all i've had no missed shifts it's not clonky it's actually a pretty sweet gearbox and all in all it's a really friendly bike it's a really easy bike to ride if you're coming up to your first big bike then you won't find it intimidating at all but it's so much fun to ride it is so good i really really do like this bike some people are not going to like the styling. I talk about how bikes look, but it's such a personal preference. I don't mind the look of the Honda, but so many people seem to absolutely hate it when it came out. And uh, this is equally, you know, as angular and, and, and modern looking. Having those kind of separate headlights in the front on top of each other, I wasn't so sure, but it works, particularly with those little side lights that you have built into the fairing. I think it's a handsome looking bike and I really do love this blue this just works for me with the wheels and the frame and everything it's a really nicely finished bike actually the fit and finish is good I've been sort of looking around it to see if I can pick holes and I'm struggling again considering the price the only one thing I think that kind of stands out a little bit is the little keyhole to release the rear pillion seat pad it's just like a silver thing that sits on the top of the fairing. It just kind of stands out like a sore thumb, really. You could have hidden it down underneath, maybe, or you know, made it uh, colour-coded or black or something. But it just, you know, but that's, um, that's a really minor thing. Now, although I said it's got lots of mid-range grunt, there's still a decent amount of power up top. So if you do want to get it up higher in the rev range, it will reward you. But after about 8,000 it sort of runs that puff but by then you're going very quickly anyway I think Suzuki have done a really really good job with this it's interesting because I, I kind of would like to have a middleweight naked 
I do like my adventure bikes the Africa Twin is absolutely superb I love that thing but sometimes when you just want to come out and have a scratch around on roads like this this is a little bit more fun so I've got my eye on on a kind of a, a naked middleweight the, the K, KTM 890 Duke is one that I've ridden before and I really liked the Hornet obviously really got my juices flowing because of the price at £7,000 for that you think actually this is a good bike you know I can add a quick shifter onto that and I'm still coming in to less than this the KTM 790 more power lighter weight not so keen on the looks and the styling of it um, but you know now they've done that deal with CF Moto that price is, is very competitive for what is a very good bike when I've kind of looked through the list and look at what I've got to spend you know just over seven thousand pounds gets me an MT07 again an absolutely stonking bike the Trident's a really nice looking bike I've really enjoyed riding that is the only triple in this lineup as well so that gives it a little bit of a differentiation but of all of those bikes that I've ridden the one that I've enjoyed riding the most and the one that I'm most likely to slap my money on the table is for this and I never thought I'd say that from looking at the Suzuki range over uh, the last decade there's not really been very much to excite me but this I would definitely have one of these in my garage I think Suzuki have just done such a good job with this it's such a nice bike to ride uh, yeah well done Suzuki this is I think a winner too many bikes not enough money that's the problem and that's the problem with making these reviews you get to ride bikes I think I'm now up over well over a hundred bike reviews on the channel so I've ridden a lot of different bikes and there's some of those bikes that you just get on and you gel with straight away the Africa Twin was like that I got on I felt comfortable I love the layout I love riding it I know there's lighter bikes there's more powerful adventure bikes but there's something about it that I just love and I'm pretty much the same with this I am quite smitten with this bike I just got straight on it and thought you know what it's super comfy I enjoy riding it it looks good and it's well priced what's not to like anyway let's find somewhere to go and have another look around it just to show it out in the wild okay so you'll have to ignore the camera on there I'll leave that on but let's just have a quick look around it in the sunshine look at that I think that's lovely detachable rear subframe detachable rear hangers so if I owned this I don't take a pill in I'd probably look to see if I get a color coded cover to go on that take these off and I didn't speak about these tires but these Dunlop tires are brilliant Road Sport 2's really grippy actually good in the wet I did get caught in the rain in them really nice Nissan brakes nice and powerful good feel no complaints about those whatsoever but overall it's just nice obviously this is a little bit of a carbuncle but with homologation rules they have to get that number plate out behind the rear wheel I'm pretty sure there will be plenty of different tail tidies so we can get that back here and get the plate down here I know that's not the most practical and the practical guys will go more you're gonna get a wet back yeah pff, I can live with that it also looks like potentially it could be an option to get a tail light in there under the seat that would be super neat overall it's just very nicely put together I like that they've gone with silver forks as well instead of the gold so many go with the gold and I don't particularly like them and it would look out of place on here but those silver fork legs look good it is the heaviest bike in that list that I put together but it doesn't feel any heavier than the others I think because it carries its weight really low and really central it's quite a nice narrow engine it is in fact a very narrow bike when you look down on it from the top when you're sitting there really narrow it makes it very easy to get your feet down and it's the sort of bike where you don't really need to do anything to it sometimes you go well I want to change this I want to change that other than maybe changing that rear tail tidy is not important but that would make things look better but outside of that I don't know that there's anything I'd want to change maybe a little fly screen to cover the back of this but phew, I think it's nice as it is oh and there's that keychain no no it's practical but it's there and it's silver you know if it had been under here maybe it would be less visible 
also is the other thing to talk about is this TFT screen, which I think is brilliant. Suzuki have done a really good job. Let's get around here in the shade so you'll be able to see it a bit better. A lot of their bikes haven't had TFTs in for a while, but this one, everything I need to know, a nice sweepy rev counter, I like that. I've got my speed, I've got my temperature, my traction control and rider modes. You can see the quick shifter switched on, gear selector, fuel tank, everything you need. Down here I've got 89 miles of range left, but you can click through on this and it will show you your trip so the last trip from when I reset it and I've averaged 62 miles to the gallon which is pretty good considering I've not been taking it easy I've not been trying to ride it in a frugal sense so it sips fuel to operate this again really simple press your mode button your traction controls you can turn it off completely if you want to be a hooligan and you've got traction control one two and three I normally leave it in the middle at two press that mode button again and we're on to the rider modes and you've got A, B and C which is I guess kind of like sport, road and rain for the most of the riding I'm doing 2B seems to work really well and that's it, that is the simplicity of it obviously I've got a B line on here which is completely separate but yeah nice, everything's nice and black there's no big real mixture of colours some companies put a real mix on they've thought about it with this the only thing i would say is looking at let's just show you those when you look at the foot controls for some reason they're in silver um, it's picky i'm really picky if i do that but one thing i would probably do is maybe take those off and get those anodized black they might look quite cool in that bodywork blue as well Right, so I don't think there's that much more I can talk about. I've kind of, this is the second video I did of this. I did the initial response video with Tomboy a bit, so if you haven't seen that, I'll put a link up in the top corner for you to go out and have a look at it. And that was just more of, a, of an initial look and getting the thoughts and perspectives from somebody else. And she was equally as big a fan of this bike as I am, I think. I've got the sun right behind me, apologies, but I think I can... Oh, that's a nice old house. Um, I think I can kind of pull a summary together now for you. At 7999 is the same price as the KTM, uh, which puts it at the most expensive of that. But you do get things like the quick shifter as standard, which you don't get on any of the other bikes. The Honda is the cheapest at 7000 or 6999 they're all priced within a thousand pounds of each other and by the time you start adding bits and pieces on um, they're, they're all going to be pretty much of a similar type of, of price really power wise they're all pretty similar as well it just depends on what you what you want if you want something that's revier where you you like to sort of get it working up at the top end then the honda or the ktm are probably well no probably the honda definitely is going to be more interested the ktm has got more torque so it really is horses for courses but we're so lucky to have a real range of bikes in that sector to choose from all priced decently all pretty well specced they'll look good you know if you want to trip all the tridents there if you want the sharper handling more aggressive kind of ready to race then the ktm's the one to go for the kawasaki sits there a little bit long in the tooth now but there that's there as a good option the mt07 continues to be a really good seller that cp2 engine is just superb uh, and that is a hell of a lot of fun a proper hooligans bike for me when you look at the overall riding experience this is the one that i would pick so anyway i hope this video has been useful for you if you're looking at this sector of bike if you've got any questions let me know in the comment section down below i do always read your comments i always try to reply to them sometimes there's comments that i can't reply to because they're just statements um, but if you've got questions i'll always try to answer those i'm going to go and make the most of this beautiful weather so until next time take care ride safe and i'll see you soon bye